Hello and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. Today we got some more actual history for you from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas by J.W. Wilbarker, published all the way back in 1889. Now today's story is about a man by the name of John Denton. He's the namesake of Denton County. and This is about an encounter he had with Indians all the way back in 1841. The next step by the pioneers of Grayson County towards civilization was to have preaching whenever they could catch a gospel dispenser straying their way. The first sermon they had, and the last for several years, was delivered by a Methodist preacher by the name of John Denton. He hailed from Arkansas, where he was well known by the Dugan family. After his arrival in Texas, he located in Clarksville, occasionally visiting Warren to attend court. It was during one of these visits that Mother Dugan heard of his presence and sent him a request to preach while there. He cheerfully complied and made an appointment for the following Sunday at the schoolhouse in Warren. An event of so much importance must have filled the little log house to overflowing. What an attentive congregation he must have had as they listened to the word of God for the first time in the wilderness and awoke the echoes of the silent forest with their songs of Zion. Would it were my pleasant task to record a long life of usefulness for this good man, but such is not to be. A sacrifice to Indian treachery, his death fully serves as an illustration of their appreciation of a peace policy. When the Indians again commenced their depredations, Denton was the foremost to go whenever the call for help was heard, and to assist in any movement for the benefit of the settlers. A raid had been made and a number of horses driven off by the Indians, and Denton with a party of men started on their trail to try and recover the stock. When near the crossing of a creek in what is now called Denton County, he called a halt, and pointing to the bushes and brush near the crossing ahead of them, remarked that he did not think it safe to ride through there, as the Indians might be lying in ambush to surprise them, and advised turning back a short distance and scouting around. Some of the men in the party were of the same opinion, and thought that was the safest plan, but one objected, didn't see any danger, etc., and intimated that Denton was afraid, and wanted to turn back. Not fancying this unmerited attack upon his bravery, Denton said that he would go as far as any man, and started on ahead, the others following. When they approached the crossing and were well opposite the bushes, the Indians raised from where they had been crouching and watching every movement and fired upon them, singling out Denton as the leader. The whole party turned and retreated in great haste, to find when they halted at a safe distance that Denton's riderless horse was with them. Unknown to his companions, he had been mortally wounded and had fallen off his horse in the retreat. The man who told of the affair afterwards said, when Denton wheeled his horse around to retreat, he looked at me with a smile on his face, and an expression which seemed to say, What did I tell you? Hardly realizing that he was shot as he had turned with them, they returned to rescue him if it were possible he had been thrown. They found his dead body where it had fallen off in the brush by the side of the trail, and not far from where he was shot. Strange to relate, the Indians had not disturbed him, probably not knowing they had killed anyone. His friends carried him to a secluded spot away from the trail, wrapped him in a blanket and buried him. His grave they dug with their hatchets and knives, and lined with slabs of slate rock. Then they laid him tenderly in, covering him with another slab, and filled up the grave carefully, smoothing it level and scattering leaves over it that the Indians might not find and disturb his last resting place. So perished one of Texas's bravest and best pioneers, a fine orator far above the average in intelligence, and had he lived would have proved a blessing to his country and assisted materially in its advancement. The pioneer was laid to rest, the Indian set him free, disturb him not but let him sleep. So that's the end of this story. This was about John B. Denton, who is the namesake for Denton County. Unfortunately, he met his end there back in 1841. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.